we're going to start off by going over some basic facts about the math section. I'm going to assume you don't know anything about the SATs. Let's say you're an alien just landed on this planet. First of all, welcome. You're probably at the right place because I'm going to cover all the SAT math basics starting from the ground up. Also today, we're going to cover key SAT test taking strategy. Here we're going to go over and practice two super important math strategy keys that will help you rock out like a superstar in the SAT math section. First off, we're going to meet the math section. Before you can beat something, you got to know what you're up against. On every SAT, there will be three graded math sections. The first two sections are 25 minutes each. The last section is 20 minutes. So when you count it up, there are 70 minutes total and 54 questions total in these three sections. Do the math, and that comes to 1 minute 15 seconds per question on average. Shoot, that's not a lot of time. This is a very fast-paced exam. Now let's talk about grid-ins. Ah, so grid-ins are a bit special. A lot of kids think these are the hardest math questions, but with a little bit of practice, there's nothing scary about grid-ins. Your grid-in scantron will look like this. Grid-ins are the only questions on the SAT where there is no multiple choice bubbles. You have to figure out the correct answer and fill it in on the answer sheet. You need to write your answer in at the top and fill in the corresponding numbers below. Technically, the grading machine will only read the bubbling, but still it's a good idea to always first fill in the answer into the boxes at top, so you don't accidentally bubble incorrectly. A good tip is to always start on the far left column and grid as far right as possible. For example, if your answer is a 3, you would write a 3 on the top left column and then bubble it below. Voila! It's okay to leave all the other columns blank. Nobody will look at those. Hmm, so what if your answer was a fraction? Say it's 2 thirds, then you would write it on top, starting from the left. 2 dash 3. Now go ahead and bubble in the corresponding bubbles. Notice that the last column on the right is blank. That's okay, just leave it that way. What if your answer was a really long fraction, like 2.666666? Now what do you do? You don't have enough columns. Well, you have to fill in as much of the decimal as you can. But the good news is, the graders don't care if you round up or if you just cut the decimal off. Here you see that we have bubbled 2.66. That's right, but if you wanted to round up and put 2.67, that's perfectly okay too. Both answers are going to be marked correct. Remember, you must grid in as much as the columns allow in order to be as precise as possible. Okay, because grid ins are such a special beast, there are also special grid in rules. A grid in can never be a negative number or a number greater than 9999. Think about it. That's because there is no way to fill those numbers in. Lastly, there is no guessing penalty for grid ins. This is fantastic. These are the only questions on the SAT where there is no guessing penalty. Let's talk about calculators. Do you need a calculator for the math section? Those people who get rich making these tests up say no. Which is true. You should be able to work out these calculations by hand. But my question is, if you don't have to, why would you? I mean, if you were Batman, you could fight off the bad guys with awesome hand fighting skills, but why would you when you could use your awesome fancy gadgets? You could pull out a paper map, but why would you when you could use a GPS? You get my drift. Therefore, if you have access to a calculator, 
especially a graphing calculator. By all means, use it. Give yourself that advantage. And be sure to use the same calculator for your practice tests as you will for the real SAT. You don't want to spend time on test day figuring out where the pie button is or trying to get the equal button unstuck after your baby sister spilled juice all over. It makes a huge difference to be familiar with the calculator you use. So please bring the same calculator you use in math class on the practice SATs into the test center with you on test day.